Day 20 on the Hanamichi flower path. Very exciting. I'm glad I've made it this far. And I want to say thank you to everyone who has supported and encouraged and um, given me positive feedback. Uh, it means a lot and I'm very grateful to all those who take the time to watch these videos. To celebrate, I've decided that today I'm going to bring up 20 words that spring to my mind today um, from the year 1910, which was when Sheila was 20. So 20 words or 20 names um, that I was reading about today on my research into the life of Sheila. So without further ado, let's get stuck in. The first word is excursions. The time of the early 20th century, 1900s, was described as the Viennese Art Spring. This was a huge time in art. So much was going on and Sheila as a 20-year-old man must have surely been swept away by all of what he had seen. So I call that the beauty of excursions. Moving on to word number two. Neue Kunstgruppe. This was formed by Anton Peschke, Egon Schiele and Anton Feistur. And they were three young boys who were studying together at school um, in Vienna, the art school, and were completely um, against the kind of traditional classical approach of the school and decided to do their own thing. And they set up the Neukunstgruppe. And yeah, Klimt. So Sheila had a lifelong love and appreciation for Klimt. However, in the year 1910, he decided to distance himself from the aesthetic of Klimt's more decorative and ornamental um, artwork and designs, which he had copied for a long period. So he was now, Sheila, starting to move away from this and explore a more radical approach to image and representation. Then we have Erwin, Erwin Dominic Ossin, who I'm really intrigued to explore more. He is an artist colleague of Sheila, who was not only a painter, but an expressive dancer and a pantomime. And it was his unconventional body language that painted the way, pun intended, for Sheila to explore all of these gestures and hand positions and body contortions that are so much a part of his aesthetic. Max Oppenheimer. Now, again, someone that I really have to delve deeper and understand more, but Max. but um, he was basically one of the forebears of expressionism and a contemporary of Sheila. And they also shared a studio for a certain period and, um, yeah, they were good friends. Then we have human figure, Kurpa, body. The body would become Sheila's most important subject in his whole life. And in the first half of the year 1910, Sheila painted mainly male uh, nude paintings and in the second half of the year he then would start painting um, female nudes um, but you human figure wow money uh, so these radical portraits that Sheila were, was painting were very very shocking for the time and that meant that a lot of the people he was depicting who were commissioning him didn't like his work and then therefore wouldn't pay him or didn't want him so this meant that he was losing work also his uncle Leopold um, stopped providing him money and he had a new studio which he was now having to pay for so money was a struggle for Sheila. Now the Wiener Werkstatter was a group of artists 
who um, was basically an umbrella term for um, a group of artists who would promote the cross promote craftsmanship and thereby by creating an alternative to mass production. And Klimt was the one who introduced um, Schiele to the Wiener Werkstätte and Schiele had uh, designed some postcards and things like that for them. Schiele was a poet in every sense of the word and I'm going to read you a poem that he wrote in 1910. I am for me and those to whom the thirsty drunkenness for freedom presents everything with me and for everyone as well because everyone I love, love. I am among the most noble, the most noble and among those who requite the one who requites most. I am human. I love life and I love death. Vienna. Vienna was a place that Sheila began to loathe, I think is a strong word, but one that you could say. Um, it kind of represented, you know, it was just a fierce place. And um, there are notes uh, that he wrote to people about his you know, wanting to leave and sort of escape and um, just, yeah, he definitely didn't have a good time in Vienna. Landscapes, again in 1910, um, perhaps because of this sort of gloominess about Vienna and v Viennese life at the time, he longed for nature and he longed to escape into the, the beauty of nature and uh, especially to paint and draw nature. And he did end up leaving Vienna um, in 1911 and um, did that painted nature um, beautifully. Now, Heinrich Benisch, there's a quote I want to read from him. He recalled, um, he was, I should say, first of all, he was one of Sheila's first collectors and supported a lot of his work. He recalled later in his life, Sheila was not was Sheila was unusual not only as an artist but also as a person. He was basically serious by nature, not with a gloomy, melancholic, head hanging earnestness, but with the calm seriousness of an individual fully occupied by his intellectual mission. Well, that's what I have time for. The Academy. So the Academy was the complete antithesis to what Sheila was all about. Um, he didn't end up finishing his schooling at the academy. He left in the third year, along with the two other boys I mentioned who formed the Neu Kunstgruppe. And yeah, he did not get on with that institution. And if you look at Sheila's paintings, you can see why. Although he did learn a lot from them as well. So, enormous nudes. Okay, I can explain. Um, in 1910, he created five of these enormous nudes. And this one, for instance, is literally, it's, it's like life size. It's, um, I think, 150 by 150 centimetres squared. And yeah, that's just a uh, very grand scale to which he's doing these nudes. Um, so another new kind of adventure that he was beginning in this year. Colour too was such a um, important element of Sheila's work and something that changed quite drastically in this year. Again, if we think about Klimt and that kind of um, uh, almost um, erotic femme fatale sort of softer colours, Sheila was exploring in a lot of his work now the kind of yellow, greens or reds, which was almost going beyond realistic representation towards a more kind of expressionistic style. Um, motherhood is another interesting word and idea. In spring of 1910, Sheila had an opportunity to draw the patients in a woman's hospital. And it was during this time that he produced a large number of drawings and pictures of mothers with their children and pregnant women. On a number of occasions, Sheila took up the connection between birth and death. At the beginning of the 10th, 20th century, the mortality rate among infants and mothers was still high. 
Mirror. Uh, in 1910, Sheila drew the only drawing of himself drawing, if that makes sense. Um, and yeah, I think, oh, that was a quick one. Arthur Rosella, Arthur Rosler. Um, Arthur Rosler discovered Sheila in 1910. Uh, sorry, no, he discovered Sheila in 1909 at the exhibition of the new art group. But in 1910, um, they then became more, more greater, uh, greatly acquainted. And basically, Arthur Rosler um, was an enthusiastic supporter and patron of Sheila and promoted his works whenever he could, however he could. Jungenstil. Now, this basically means Art Nouveau, Art Nouveau. Nouveau. I always kind of get baffled by that word. And it's encapsulated by the likes of Gustav Klimt and this ornamental decorative aesthetic which Schiele, as I kind of mentioned earlier, um, moved away from in search of his own kind of style, um, which was definitely more expressionistic um, yeah, in its kind of tone. Image. The last image I am going to present is the self-portrait in a Panama hat and white suit. Um, Sheila was a absolute dandy, um, an absolute lover of image, constantly as since he was a child would stare at himself in the mirror, was so infatuated by human figures, human bodies, soul, everything and that is it